Hi, I'm Monica Cesarato, a food and travel blogger in Venice. Welcome to Venice Meets, a series of live chats from Instagram every day at 6 p.m. CET. Today, I will be talking to John Skelcher, landscape artist and painting instructor for the retreat in Le Marche region. Hello, John. Hello, Monica. Hi. Better, definitely better with a Wi-Fi. <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. No, but you got a good connection because sometimes we have people that uh, try with a Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi isn't very good and then the phone is better, so I never know. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. You know, we've, um, we're, we're in our sixth or se- seventh week of lockdown here in La Marque. Uh, oh, okay, we're... you're in La Marque. You're not in the UK. Oh, okay. I'm not you in the UK, UK. no. Oh, so right, in, okay. I'm at the retreat here and... Um, so we, we actually went in, into lockdown a week earlier just because we knew what the situation was in uh, L- uh, Lombardy. So we just thought to be safe. So we're very fortunate because the retreat's in the countryside. So yes. it's, so it's actually, just got you, you've been as long, You have been as long as we have here in the Veneto because uh, we went uh, like uh, Lombardy a week ahead of everybody. So I hear everybody complaining exactly. and we go like, we've been in Lombardy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until yeah, you get to the seventh, eighth week, and then you can go play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and it's such a welcome news that, you know, come May the 4th, we're going to phase two. So that's mm-hmm. that's a very positive step, I think, for Italy. I know. Where about in Le Marche are you? I'm sorry? Where about in Marche are you? Um, so we're in southern Le Marche, not too far from Ascoli Piceno. Okay. Okay, so, so what, what I don't know if you've, no, I I don't know if you've ever been there. I've never been there. I know the area, of course, because you know we do study, I did do geography at school, so I know, but I've never been. So, yeah. Mark is one of the regions that I promised myself I need to go to Urbino to see my friends at uh, Giulia uh, e Vallenuova. So, I probably come down there as well because I'm, I know that Mark is one of those, uh, you're supposed to have been the new Tuscany years ago. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's different. From a lands- landscape painter's perspective, um, you know, it's got similar um, um, pros uh, without any of the cons, really, because it's it's off the beaten track, oh. you know, and not very touristy at all. So it's unspoiled uh, yeah. in that regard. So it's, uh, it's fantastic for a painter and for anyone wanting a more... Um, um you know a, a off the beaten track type yeah. holiday you know but and I, I think i assume when you want to do painting you need this kind of thing he, 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 to go to a place where it's nice i mean i'm the daughter of a painter so i remember when my dad used to go out and pick his car and pick all his uh, oils and his uh, canvases and stuff and he used to go in the middle of nowhere and as soon as there were people boom, he packed up and left so uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, it, occupational hazard, I'm afraid. And you know, as you, as you're an Italian, you'll know it. Italians love art, so they're very curious when they see a painter. You know, and they want to come and admire the work and give some advice, maybe, and and talk about the locality and what's going on over there. And yeah. it's, it's all those exciting um, extras you get in Italy, and only in Italy. Has it ever happened to you? Because to my dad, it used to happen all the time. It used to stop in a place. So, we, you know, some, he, he used to love to do, uh, then he later went to do something else. But for a period, he was doing a lot of, you know, uh, pain, uh, pais- paisaggi, you know, panoramas and stuff. And it used to happen to him a lot of times that he would be painting. And all of a sudden, the owner of the house came, looked at him, says, okay, how much do you want? And <laughs> I mean, we only got very few paintings because people used to buy them all the time. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's great. Well, that's a great compliment. And it, yes, it's happened to me a couple of times um, when I've been out and about painting. But um, it, to, to be honest, uh, it's been, um, for me, it, it's been just wonderful just to get the, the, um, the curiosity of Italians, you know. And when they find out you're British or from America, when we get American guests or from wherever, oh, the they get very excited. Yeah, it's lovely. 
Yeah. So how did how did you all start with a retreat? How how come you started doing this? Well, I, well, I'd have to go right back now because, um, and it was interesting when I tuned in to your friend uh, Sarah from Seattle a couple of uh, days ago. Yeah, she was mentioning about um, the education uh, in uh, Italy as to the US. And I was a school teacher in, in London. And I know you lived in London for a while. So yes. you know that system very well. So, yes. um, and I was on the other side because I was a school teacher. Um, can I just stop a second? They're asking me, can you, I'm asking you, can you turn down the birds? <laughs> oh, the birds? <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got some birds over here in the cage. And, and, and there's another little bird hiding. <laughs> and That's your dog. <laughs> That's Ivy. Tripping away. I think really loud. I can move over this. Fire lock. Fire lock. It's just hungry. She's just hungry. Oh, she's just going to feed the birds. So uh, hopefully. It was, I thought it was strange that she was, uh, they were screaming like that for the sake. So. Yeah, I think he's, we've got a love bird and uh, he's a bit hungry. See the poor thing, uh, you're abusing the, uh, an animal there. Oh. Oh, it, you see, it's, it's Ivy, she, she looks after that to her pets, so he, she, she's the one who's guilty of it. Okay. You know. But anyway, hopefully he'll be a bit quieter once he's fed. Okay. Yeah, we've got, we've got lots of animals at the retreat, uh, and the birds are just yeah, another one of the features. Animals. In fact, we even, are, we even have little kittens that are newborn, and I have my favorite little What? And you love that? Oh, a turtle. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> <love it>. yeah. <laughs> She is just... You've got a little bird, haven't you? Yeah, it looks like. <laughs> well, okay. you know... <laughs> you were a teacher in London. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, what happened was I was um, I was a head of department in a large school in you know an inner city school in London, okay. and one of my colleagues uh, Enrico, who was from Perugia, and um, he we we were talking one day about landscape painting, and um, I I'd kind of had enough after five years in London, and I'd been teaching for fifteen years, you know, well, already. Well, what period was that, the 90s? So I was teaching through the, um, so from the mid 90s to uh, 2006. So yeah, okay. quite, yeah. quite I, a I period. I was there in the 90s, so I'm not, yes, I get it. Yeah. And it wasn't getting any easier. And, it, and don't get me wrong, the children are fine. It was just, I felt um, that the situation for education in Britain was not um, what I felt mm. was good for the children anymore mm -hmm. so um w well myself and yana uh, we decided that we would like to move to italy mm -hmm. you know for a for a and <laughs> comes another she's bringing the kittens down <laughs> anyway so you know, um, you know what they say usually on tv obviously we're on tv but they say never do never film with animals and children <laughs> exactly <laughs> There's no escape, I'm afraid. <laughs> I should have put it on the, on the instruction. No animals, no children, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go I on. just noticed you've got some friends of mine from my academy days tuning in. Hi, oh, Adi. Good, good, good. good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, to cut a long story short there, what, what happened was Enrico said to me, listen, John, you know, he's an Italian, he knows. He said, don't go to Tuscany, you know, it would be, um, you know, ob an obvious uh, place to go. Of go course. to La Marche or Umbria. You well, know, yeah. I haven't really uh, heard of La Marche, like many British people, I guess. Um, so... Uh, and as you say, it's uh, it's kind of um, they they tout it as the new Tuscany, you yeah. know. Yeah. So when when we arrived, I couldn't believe the the backdrops, you know. And um, well, I'd heard of Urbino, of course. Uh, Raffaella or Raphael to the English was born there, but I didn't realise that was Limarca. I thought that was Tuscany, but of course mm -hmm. now I know. So yeah. it's, it's, much it's a different as well. world much cheaper it is. it is so for any of your guests who are, are are interested in living in italy what a great move that would be 
Um, well, you know, okay, okay, wait, case... wait, John, John. After we get back into track, right now I don't think it's oh, right. Yeah. Now. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm trying to be positive about it. I'm hoping that's just a, a temporary glitch. You know, <laughs> my goodness. A year. Give it a year. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we will talk about that later in the interview because obviously we need strategies to uh, sort of, um, you know, overcome these uh, this this period. That's Absolutely. really it's it's a fallow period for tourism. That's for sure. Everybody. Um, and everybody's going to be struggling and have, having difficulties. So I've got a few ideas um, that we're we're trying to um, get off the ground here. And it might be useful for other people to hear, especially if you're into art and um, you're interested in painting and stuff. So we'll talk about that later. But so, yes, we, we got out of uh, London and um, at the right time in, in 2006, we bought the property in 2007, just before the crash. So we, we kind of lucked out. We got a lovely um, property in the countryside here. And we had the intention of turning it into an art retreat for landscape painters. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it took three years to to um, bring that yeah. about because you know as well as I do, and we had no idea about regulations in Italy, incredibly tight and um, yep. take some time. You know, that's one way of describing it. Yes. Um, let's, say, let's say if you are half Italian, married to an Italian, you've got some kind of Italian connection, it's yeah. quicker when you yeah. come from outside oh my god yes i know i know it's yeah. uh so, you know. i mean we do we do have uh, friends uh, in the fortunate position of um you know having their other half as an italian and of course it doesn't make life without these problems but it makes it a lot easier because there's a way through that's more if your communication skills are there um and of course you know it was difficult for me because when i arrived i you know i'm not particularly fluent in italian now but then i was terrible mm -hmm. uh jana was is a linguist and she's a german so ah, okay yeah so she she picked up the language uh, quite quickly i think and uh, that really helped so uh, that, that's, I, not, that's not a reason john she's a woman <laughs> that's why I, I knew you were going to say that yeah well <laughs> Um, so anyway, that it certainly helps, you know, to to have um, the benefit of both genders on the yeah. project in Italy, you know. Yeah. So um, we we managed to get through, and then by 2010, we started to run the workshops here, um, and um, and it, in 2016, no, 2014, I started to run workshops in Tuscany as well. Okay. And I'd always, always fancied uh, doing workshops, watercolor workshops in Ven Venice. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, because of the atmosphere, the mood, the reflections, and the beautiful um, architecture. I mean, it's the most. There's something about the colors of Venice, of the light and the colors in the city that yeah. it is only of Venice. I'm sorry. There's no, you, you can there's see no way to compare. Venice. There are certain colors, certain blues, and certain greens, and certain reds. But it's Red, just yeah, it's it, you, you're right, and it's all of those things. Um, but also, it's the most beautiful city in the world, you know. So how how can you uh, not, as a painter, wish to be there, you know, to paint? Um, and of course, there's all sorts of issues with trying to paint, as you say, with, about your father's experiences. Painting in Venice is a totally diff different affair to painting in La Marque, where you'll probably not see anyone except for a farmer on his tractor in the day. But in Venice, you're, you're, you're going to see thousands, tens of thousands of people, probably, if you're in a main square. So when I, when I run a workshop in somewhere like Venice, I tend to uh, start out in the sort of um the back street uh back canal situations like canareggio or somewhere where it's less touristy to begin with yeah, before you. venturing out so yeah so um i i was set to begin my first workshop in venice this week oh, and no. unfortunately <laughs> Oh it my god, the weather is fantastic at the moment. It is uh, probably one of the best oh. spring 
we're not enjoying it, but we're on the screen for a long time. Uh, I know. Well, I'm, I'm, pleased, not... I'm pleased for you. That's wonderful that you're, you're you know, you're, you're getting... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I can't go out, but yes. Yeah. See, but, um, but so how, you... how, long, how long do the courses last generally? Well, the, the various courses are six days. So, oh. you know, within, within the six days, we get through a lot because... Um, um, I, I take my because I don't know exactly the the um, the level of skill that okay. my students will arrive with, okay. and so I I never make any uh, assumptions on that. So I teach a standard um, core um, which will help uh, the the student whether they're a beginner or intermediate, you mm -hmm. know. And sometimes we get advanced students, which is great because you know. Um, all artists who have more advanced skills, they, they tend to have a different uh, little diff, different methods. And it's nice for them to see your method and you to see theirs. And, and you and can critique. And for the other students as well to see other methods exactly. at the same time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's really good because, um, I mean, I never operate very large courses. I have small courses. Um, and how many people um, generally? Well, it depends. I mean... It can be up to nine. Uh, if I'm at the retreat, I can only uh, accommodate at this retreat nine people. But oh, in Venice, good. it would be, you know, seven or eight, sometimes yeah. nine. I've had it up to 14, but um, that's, to... that's yeah. very hard to keep an eye on everybody. But yeah. I wouldn't want to go uh, more than nine, really. Not in, not in um, a situation like Venice. Not actually... <clears throat> what you're saying is exactly the kind of tourism that we want, uh, not just in Venice, all over Italy, because uh, yeah. you are taking people for an extended period of time. They are not wandering around. They are experiencing the city, sitting down, breathing in, seeing the day go by, with people passing and going, uh, investing in the city, of course. And yes. at the same time, is a very because it's small numbers. They get, I'm not saying one to one, but it's nearly a one to one because I remember uh, four or five years ago. You know, I'm a daughter of a painter, but I cannot paint. So four or five years ago, I took part in a year in the Kaliugani. There was a friend of mine that was holding courses, and I thought, oh, okay, right, I'll give it a go. And we must have been about ten people or something like that. And it was very interesting to have somebody, you know. Yeah following me and telling me, look, do this, do that, because, yes. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the basis, the basis of this, the, cor the course that I operate is I, I start off with a structure of principles, mm -hmm. and then I, and on top of that I build uh, techniques. So each day there's a demonstration. I will demonstrate a particular um, technique, and then um, the student will then build that into what they've learned before and go mm -hmm. forward. And, on, and as well as this, the, the principles that we would look at would be uh, placement. So we know how to compose and select an aspect, maybe um, um, a church, tower, you know, um, and draw that out. And then look at perspective to make this look three-dimensional and from the viewpoint. Okay. And then once, we, once we're using the placement with proportion and perspective... I call that the three P's. Once I've got the three P's and the student has that, then we can advance. And okay. so that's, that's the compositional element. So that, that's, that's in a nutshell, nutshell, really. But the three uh, principles, which it wouldn't matter what media you're using. I'm teaching watercolors in Venice, but I sometimes teach oils. Um, yeah, I, was about in, to, about, I was about to ask, is the only watercolors or do you do also other kinds of techniques? Okay. Watercolors, uh, in, I assume, is the easiest because it dries quickly. Yes, yes. And, and also, um, with the, um, as you mentioned, the, the, the sort of the populous, the, the uh, very populated um, uh, urban scene of Venice, it's better to use watercolors because, well, it's a world um, heritage site. So we have to respect, you know, the, the heritage of the location. And if someone drops their uh, easel or something like this, it's no harm done with watercolor. But with oils, yes, you know, yes. if it's a travertine step, 
it could be quite um, a mess. And that's very uh, thoughtful. I never even realized on that. That's actually a very thoughtful thing. Uh, this is uh, nice. Uh, do people have to take their own uh, um, or do you actually provide them? So I, I provide uh, all the materials for the course. I provide um, the paints, the brushes. So I, I uh, advise what type of brushes, like for watercolors, we use sables, Kalinsky sables. Um, which are the perfect brush for holding um, a lot of water uh, for a longer line or a wash. So there's particular brushes that you need to use when you're watercolour painting and particular paper, because when you're uh, painting with watercolour, you need to know about timing, what yes. the paper will do. Yeah, um, it can be dry so it, quickly. So once exactly, you and the ambient conditions will also affect it. So you need to know uh, a little bit about those sort of things. And you need a teacher on hand to, to, to assist you with seeing the problems and the issues before they arise. On a windy day, you know, we need to, to think about how wet the paper will be because, um, you know, there's several different states of thickness for the watercolour. You can add a lot of water to it, so it's like tea, or you can have a little bit of water and it's more buttery. And what those effects and thicknesses of the paint will do under different various um, dampness or dryness of the paper. So these are the things I will teach on the, on the course in Venice. And also, um, I assume, do you do the watercolours? On, you do it on paper, not on big canvases, so it's easier to carry, am I right? Yes, it's on paper for so what? Yes, so what I do is uh, for watercolor courses, I give the the student a, a watercolor sketch pad. So they have a pad of uh, pre-stretched paper that's thick enough, a good thickness, um, to take the load of water without the buckle that you can get with water on paper. Um, but of course, when I'm doing an oil painting. Um, you know, plein air course um, is on canvas, but that's that's different to the the course I w that I would offer in in Venice, for example. Um, I've got some examples here of the sort of uh, works that we do. I could show you in a bit, but um, you know, um, really everything's catered for. We have the chairs, we have um, the easels, we have sketch pads, we've got boards and paper, the brushes, and the paint. An accommodation where do you actually uh, do you have a uh, do you rent apartments or do you go into hotels when you come over generally or do people have to organize them themselves? No, we organize that as well. So we, we use accommodation in Canareggio. Um, we yeah, so it's fantastic location there because it's quiet and off and it's so you can get a good sleep at night as well, which is important when you you know your painting is quite um. It's such a focused um, occupation yeah. that you burn a lot of energy, you know, you know, thinking, and you tire, you know, you do get tired. And of course, in the evening, you want to go out and have a, a pair of TV and enjoy your meal. It's ideal for that. So many. Well, I hope we're going to still be there. <laughs> factory places to go. Now, it's one of the most beautiful areas of Venice, uh, as in for residents and to stay. You have tourists, but not so many tourists as if you were staying in San Marco yeah. or uh, in Santa Cruz and so on. So, no, no, totally. It's a nice uh, nice part of town to, to go to. Yeah, so we, so we have, um, so there's, uh, we, we use um, 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 the services of a, of a, a monastery, which oh, is yeah. an old palazzo, which is, um, it's absolutely gorgeous, you know. I mean, all the buildings in Venice are beautiful, you know. And um, the, 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 the nuns who run the uh, monastery um, have kept it in such a beautifully clean, pristine way. And it's got, um, you know, you can imagine, it's got all the ornate um, trappings you'd get yeah. with a monastery. But it's quiet, you know, very quiet. And you have to, you know, the guests really switch on to that quite quickly. Uh, um, and I've operated before in, in Florence in similar situations. And um, it's, um, it, it's always great to see because you imagine a monastery to be very austere and cold, you know. But, but you know, they're not these days. These days they're, they're a little bit more, um, you know, comfortable. No, they're not and, very touristic, at least in Venice. We understood that. <laughs> you know, we're not gonna have a lot of it. That's the way to go, even in Venice, I suppose. <laughs>
<laughs> well, it, it is, and it, and it, it allows us to uh, afford a good uh, accommodation. Like, uh, um, you know, it's a, I think it's about a 16th or a 17th century palazzo, so it's pretty beautiful, you know. Uh, but it's not at a five-star price, so it yeah, allows the guests to enjoy being very close to the centre. You know, you're on the main, you know, uh, um, islands. You're within the lagoons. You're not off, you know... Uh, on the mainland or anything so uh, you're very much in venice and you can get to experience all those great things that uh, venice offers you know do you also organize i'm only asking so i've got no idea do you actually organize uh, with tour guides to go and visit some like maybe the galleria or something like that to inspire people or or, or, or it's not part of the so yeah so what happens there is uh, so we do we'll do uh various locations for painting in the morning i will take people to for for to in the beginning we do um you know the the back streets and the back canals of uh, canareggio to begin with then when we've got our confidence we also go because, uh, to, that area is where you add the tintoretto so you know the tintoretto <laughs> so it's beautiful you can see tintoretto in everything um but we go to um we go to a gallery so we go to the um the museum of the academy there and we look at the bellini we look at the tintoretto and uh, the titians and although it's not watercolor the you know the the visual richness and the message is there you know we we see that so uh, and it's, in, it's inspirational i take the students there because you know i i taught well i've taught art for for so long now um and they are some of my you know favorite artists anyway so um what i tend to find i don't know if if this is your experience monica but when you go to a museum or a, or a gallery in italy with a guide they will take you to their allocated paintings you know they well it depends if you use it uh, a lot if you use the guide of the museums yes yeah. if you get a professional guide independent and you yes. tell them exactly what you want uh, then they will build the itinerary yeah your specification it depends who you use it. but yeah it it's, it's, very it's very interesting when you take the, the museum one sometimes they skip on some that you think oh i would like to have Exactly. Why didn't we go to see that one? Yeah, you know what I mean. So I I always take my students to the ones where I think that you know, they've come a long way. They've come from America, they've come from Canada or Australia. They want to see, you know, the Titian, they want to see the Tintoretto. They want to see whatever it is that's magnificent, yeah. you know. I, it's all it's all amazing. But, you know, um they will recognize the paintings, go, "Oh, I know that painting." And it makes uh the trip so much more when you when oh. you get these moments you know yeah. so it's just good references really so th- we do that and then of course um i'll take people off on on a boat trip we go up to murano and burano and we paint there and you oh, notice some fantastic oh, restaurant burano so, for for painting burano i think people go probably wild there go wild because of the reflections of all the colored houses and you know if if it's a wash day and you've got the laundry out it's just amazing you know yeah. you can't you can't beat this really for inspiration so um that's another aspect that i would cover but very interesting i know um uh, i missed your um your um your video last night what i think you were doing um No the the no, your last <laughs> Yeah your your last one there that you did with the um the gondolier um oh, the lock maker yeah with Pierre Rodrigue yeah. the small lock maker yeah he's he's good yeah So I I I go to a boatyard and paint there as well so Okay you go to one of the square or but what which one the one towards uh, uh, Tramontine or, or which one Do you go to um, the, Yes that the what it's it's um is it is, is it near Santo Vaso you go to Santo yeah. Vaso Santo Vaso yeah, yeah. i think it's the last one of the last um it's an an ancient family and they who've been making the gondoliers obviously the gondolas for um you know centuries but the 
there's no sons in the family now and ah, no, when you're talking about Tramontine that their father died uh, last last year i think uh, or two years ago maybe it was last year yeah and there's only two daughters now left yeah yeah and yeah. It's, and it's a, it's a beautiful view across the 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 water there and um anyway that that one's inspirational so i've been there and i and i've made sketches there and i was planning to go there with my group so there we go oh, well, so, ben, but, i mean venice is not going anywhere I don't think so. I no. mean, for the moment. So, you know, I keep telling everybody, we not count, don't count. I, I, you know, just in case people you're listening to me and you have got tour booked anywhere in the world, not just Venice, don't cancel the trip. Just no. go for it. Just don't ask for your refund. Just tell people, look, hang to my money. I'm coming back. And then, obviously, in, in a year time, you see that uh, you've got exactly. no, no way to go back, okay? I'm pretty sure you'll get your money back. But at the moment, I think, I mean, at least I'm lucky that everybody that's booked a tour with me just sent me a message and said to me, hang to my money. I'll see yeah. you in six months, uh, in a year, whatever. Uh, that's fantastic. Know. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's lovely that people are, are doing that we we've had a similar response because we had our courses and we're pretty much all full this year and it's oh, sad wow. what happened you know and we've had lots of people who come back as well from uh, who come from the florence courses or a course at the lamarque and then they wanted to go because they hadn't been to venice with me or painted in venice so they wanted to do that but they said it's okay john we understand you know um it's just exceptional circumstances what can we do so whether they come um we rebut them next year or in the in the autumn you know it's we're holding it for them and they're staying with us on that so that's been fantastic you know we've taken their bookings and um we'll hold on to them you know and we're just hoping you know and praying really that these things sorts itself out but in the meantime um we're just uh, operating on different strategies and um it was interesting hearing what you, what Sarah from Seattle was saying you know about doing all these things like planting and and you know um we we've been uh, actively growing uh, and trying to um we put, put all our crops become self sufficient more crops in this because <laughs> well we need to. just in case <laughs> Exactly. You, you just don't know and and it's a wise thing to do I think and it does it you know you get your seeds and and get planting and and it gives you something positive to think about and it gives you um, a focus of your time um because um you know in these sort of periods people can get quite depressed and I think yeah. if you start to you know it's it's obvious that uh you know we we've got to stay in you know, there is a virus out there but use your time and be entrepreneurial and do things if you've never grown and you know any plants or or taken some seeds and you know as uh, maybe you don't have a big garden but if you've got a little uh, yes. you know shelf by the window you can start to you know crop some we've got our tomatoes going we've got some peppers uh, going we put potatoes I think, in I think that uh, um it, it obviously uh, i see it is much harder for people that are used to go out and about all the time you know for people like my case where we're used to sit on from at home in front of a computer is been like yeah okay is another day like the others okay but i yeah. think that even for us uh, when you know when we started and every blog blogger out there will tell you and every journalist will tell you of our writers whatever uh, when you stay indoors so much uh, because you do lose track of time so easily it is very important to have a routine and to have a mindset where you have you, you need to be able to tell the time so for exactly. example i make sure to wake up every morning at the same time to do every morning the same kind of things afternoon and other things evening the yeah. same thing and leave myself a sunday where i don't do any of these that way That's i very understand important. that that's yeah. sustainable so it's like you're going to work and i think it's yeah. important even for people that are not used to stay indoors so much to do exactly the same kind of thing give yourself some skills some uh, um you know some routines it doesn't matter it could be yeah. just even doing your nails or i don't know but you got it yeah you're right the routines are very the rituals the routines very important to keep you um men mentally focused and and your space you know in the in the now um for artists you know 
you know, artists, um, I, I noticed Bernie's there. Hi, Bernie. She's an artist from Ireland. Um, they can lose track of time too because they get focus in the zone and they paint for hours and hours. And, they've, you know, you've got to yeah, stop and drink. I think for an artist, maybe times like this are, I know, they're bad for everybody. But I was interviewing Lily Muller a couple of, uh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago. I posted that chat as well. And I said to her, Lily, what, what do you actually do? She said, are you kidding me? I'm doing so many projects. I've got no time to do anything else. And I think as an artist, yeah. you just concentrate. So, uh, and maybe it's in these times that are so hard, maybe you draw out more emotion. Maybe they're not going to be happy emotions, but you still draw out an emotion. No, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I can't, I can't speak for all artists, um, but um, you know, when I when since being here, I did study at an academy in Florence, the Angel Academy, and I've got a lot of friends who are artists who came from there, and they're, they're a very serious bunch of artists, and they they will work pretty much as soon as they get up, which will be very early, all the way till the the end of the day. Now, um, they're so focused that it doesn't matter to them in some ways what's going on because that's their life anyway, you know. Um, so they have their routine, but they still need to, uh, they're still human beings and they're very sensitive to this world thing that's going on and it's going to have a detrimental effect. So it may be an idea to, to start to, to develop other little areas to, to, grow, to grow some optimism, like me with the planting, you know, to think, well, this could be useful. But it's also giving me a new skill, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, I would so, do yeah. an online classes as well. Maybe well, that, that's classes. one of the strategies. Um, so what, I, what I'm um, going to be doing um, through my, uh, my Facebook and Instagram accounts, I, I'm going to be posting up um, some videos which are, will be linked to my YouTube account. And I'm going to be running some for my student, my students who couldn't come this year to 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 allow them to uh, generate their drawing skills further and keep their interests up, even though they didn't come. At least they can think of Italy, and at least they and at least they can start to develop their drawing. Uh, all they need is a pencil and an eraser and a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and I'll provide the rest. So I'm going to run a little course, and it may be for ten weeks. You know, um, an hour and a half a week. They can tune in to my, my uh, YouTube site and see how I would develop and show them um, a, an academic drawing. So when, when you're a student of art at an academy in Italy or in France or in America, they tend to start with drawing from what the artists would call it a Barg drawing. Now, Charles Barg was a 19th century drawing um, instructor at the... Uh, the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris. And he designed the best drawing course to this day. You know, there's no, never been a better drawing course. Now, what I'm going to offer people is um, an introduction to the drawing, uh, the figure drawing element of the Charles Barg course. And please join me if you have a, an hour and a half. I'd gladly give you advice and have a look at your drawing. Hello, hello. Yeah. I need the 30 hours a day. <laughs> but yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Well, you know, your father was a painter, so wait, wait, wait. I'm sure it'll rub I need up. to do your drawing. I need to take uh, um, Julia Curtis yoga classes. I need to follow my friends and do the cooking classes. I need to give cooking classes because everybody <laughs> said to me, what, you're a food blogger, you're a cooking teacher, and you're not doing cooking classes? And I'm like, guys, do you realize how long it takes me just to put these chats on a video and yeah. know the art? No, yeah. You're very busy. I, I know you're very busy. And I'm kind of, it's tongue in cheek for you, Monica. You can join if you wish. Have a look at least. Yeah, uh, but of course, uh, they, your sorry, guest, you very guess, welcome. They asking me before we carry on, is it going to yeah. be free or how much is it going to cost? I hope you're going to charge because we all need to leave, guys. So uh, Exactly, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, getting to the nitty gritty, this is the way I was thinking. Um, for, for my guests that are booked on my courses, it's going to be free. But for anybody else who might be interested in, in coming to Venice and coming on my course, please book. Uh, I'll do a, an introductory class for free the first week. Okay. And if you're happy with it and it appeals to you, 
it would be say 10 euros each week and this is where the british comes out an italian would have thought yeah i'm gonna charge you full you know? yeah yeah <laughs> this is and then if you sign up monica what i'm going to do is here's the deal you know there's a 10 week course there but if you sign up for the course i'll take that money back off of your price so <laughs> the course is free whatever if you come along you know so anyway it it will keep me occupied because as you know it's a lot of work to get your your youtube channel running or your instagram no. channel it's a full time job Well just editing the video it takes ages because you need to find the right video editor you need to find yeah. you need to understand how to use it it took it took me yeah. a while I'm getting there and when you all of a sudden you're all happy you done your video you're going to load it and you realize that it takes <laughs> hours to do and you think why is it taking so long and then you find out because it's too big so you got to find a way to yeah. it <laughs> and then you got to get the format right for the different Yeah, I mean no, YouTube's different to Instagram. Everybody writing to me and say to me, "Are you going to carry on doing this chats because you know they're very nice?" And I said, "Yeah, of course if I can I will." But I said, "Do you realize that the chats is an hour? It's after the work behind that is well, really really involving for me. So I, I need to do things for free." <laughs> yes, you do, Monica. Yes. Um, I, you know, maybe one of your guests out there will help. But you're right. And and that doesn't even, uh, you know, mention the fact that you have to find your guests and keep it interesting and find something that will um appeal to people because that's the other side of it. You've got to have uh, content that's, you know, of use. I got to say I'm lucky. I'm lucky because uh, I've been doing this 12 years uh, so if for your people that are following me they don't know who I am. I'm actually a food blogger in Venice but I do also food tours and cooking classes. But I've been writing about travel and Venice for a long time. I've been doing this for 12 years now. So I built a big network of very interesting people. I was thinking the other day of all the friends that I have and I realized that there are all of us artists journalists musicians uh, uh, in politics uh, writers uh, and historians and I go like uh, oh that's fine in fact i just i am actually booked until the 11th of may no 13th 12th sorry 12th of yeah. may i know and and it's all different people and i've only had like two or three guests that come back because they're good friends of mine and we have kind of following us a series with them of kind of things but i've been doing this since i think uh, uh the middle of march or something like this now uh, yeah. that's a lot of days and not, uh, yeah. i mean i you know monica i know you i mean you've been doing this a year you're, you're an expert at this and i mean i'm quite new to it i was yeah. so new yeah. I doing, no i started doing the live chats uh at for the quarantine because i've uh, i wanted to talk to my friends on the phone and i discovered i love it so <laughs> <laughs> then so, you know i think you know you you you're a natural um it's it's more difficult for me because i you know my approach really is um you know as as a sort of a teacher with uh, i'm trying to keep it sort of academic so the student is really learning um there's a lot of courses out there and i don't want to you know Uh, be disparaging or anything about other people's courses but you know if you want to to really learn um a structured way of proceeding and get the best out of it yeah. you know you need to have drawing skills in the back so that that's uh, part of the reason why you know I'm offering that um that initiative to get people uh, to to a standard that they'll be com- confident with before they even come out so yeah um so and the, they're going to they're going to find all this information on your website right yep i'm going to did you prepare the sign or not i mean in a moment um oh. i mean i don't know how we're doing for time actually let me just quick it's check about 10 minutes okay yeah so um i i just wanted to run through a few more initiatives if okay. i may yeah, yeah, and then i'd like if i if i can get through to my studio to show you some of the the oh, watercolors and things oh, um yeah. as long as we don't lose the as long as we don't lose the connection yeah well I, what i do i've got some work in in this is the cantina in the retreat anyway this is where yana um she runs to the italian cooking classes and she makes pasta and all sorts of beautiful things as you know the food in italy is it's the mm-hmm. best food in the world because it's oh, the actually, best ingredient 
John, when people come to do uh, the retreat at your place, uh, when we come into the courses, yeah. uh, they stay in your retreat uh, and it's all yeah. a full board, yes? Yeah, so we've got a resident, there's a residential complex here. We've got an old rustico where we live and Jana does the cooking in this very cantina. Um, mm -hmm. We've got truffle dogs. She, she's a tr she, uh, Jana has a license to truffle hunt. So as you know, oh, Limarque is one of the, the splendid areas in Europe, in the best area really, one of the best anyway, in, for the white truffle. So she has a couple of um, uh, truffle dogs and um literally in the wood behind our house there are white truffles so she does dishes with them um, and uh, nice. guests can can uh, sample the truffle products and also um do cooking you know so that's great she, yana also does yoga we have a um, a lady who does yoga she's a local lady here uh, and she does uh, yoga and um that bernie's saying yana is an amazing cook so there you go she's been um but again it's the it's this slow food thing you know it's the the, the ingredients here you know italy is splendid in in you know the organic food there's none of the glycophosphates and all that nonsense that is polluting other people's food around the world and that's why I, one of the reasons why I'm in Italy, Monica, is because it's what, do you, what do you studio while you're saying it? Because I know okay. many well, things are the same I'm going to show you a couple of watercolors that I have here, and I hope that they'll show for you. I'll just quickly zoom the other way. So that's, oh, yeah. a, oh, that's nice. a water. That's a watercolor done in uh, Canareggio. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. And, and I also know where that is. Well, that's actually, yes, so that's where the, um, the monastery is. So it's right out there. Okay, and I know what that is. This is obviously the Grand Canal. Nice. So it was a bit, it was a bit of a wintry day. I mean, I'm, you know, now you're having lovely weather, but it, it would be a different palette. Whoa, wow, um, look at this one. Beautiful. That's um, obviously uh, Santa Maria della Salute, which is a perfect place for the painters. Uh, and that's just a few of the of the sort of array of watercolors that I would do. But I'm going to take you into the studio now. Yeah, There's Yana there. Hi, ciao, ciao. I heard you. I heard you're. A, I heard you're an amazing cook. Yes. I'm so gonna. So I'm, gonna, gonna have, I'm gonna have to test you then. <laughs> Yeah, I think you could. One day. <laughs> so we're going to go into this. Is the studio through here? Hopefully, it oh, doesn't wow. break up. But um, we'll see. Um, there's a couple of paintings here I'm working on. There's one of oh, look Venice. At that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's already sold. Um, I say there's another initiative I'm involved in at the moment, which is called the Artist Support Pledge. Oh, yes, and I saw that. Yeah, what is all about? What is that all about? Well, the, what, so here's, here's the drawing course I'm proposing. So mm -hmm. this is a Charles Barg uh, print there, and I'll show you how to draw the figure in proportion and scale so that you get one that looks exactly the same but is hand-drawn, and you'll really um, um, advance your skills. Um, here's, here's a wall of the sort of paintings we, we do at the retreat. These are the oh, yeah. Hilltowns in... La Marque. I don't know how well these pick up actually, but oh, no, um, we can see it. We can see it. Yeah, these are these are famous little locations here. Um, but anyway, these these are a, a sample of the oil paintings that I do um, at the at the retreat. Now, obviously, uh, when you're here, you you know guests come here. They 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 can choose to cook. I'm just going to flip back now. Yep. Here I am. So you can choose to um, you can choose to um, do yoga and painting, or cooking yoga, cooking yoga and painting, whatever you, you wish, you know. Um, and because we're in the countryside here, um, people can wander off and find a location to paint once they've got the principles, you know. Well, you could actually have also a couple where one of the two is a painter and wants to do the course, and the other one maybe just want to come and enjoy. A relaxing we do, we do get that yes we get uh, non-painting uh, partners who come along and it's wonderful for that because they can go for a walk we've got dogs here i mean there's always a there's a pet everywhere i'll just show you this. literally here's our sausage. Sausage. <laughs> He's a little sausage dog oh, um, that's, 
That's the little <laughs> Bizotto. That's the little resident Bizotto. Uh, but we've got Sheepdog as well, which will accompany a painter. If uh, if there's ladies out there who might feel a little bit uncomfortable being out on their own, um, you, they can pair up with someone who will take the Sheepdog. And the Sheepdogs, we have a chapel, uh, an old uh, shepherd's chapel above our retreat where people go and paint. It's just oh, wow. marvelous, you know. It's great. So it's a great. How many people can you accommodate uh, in the retreat? Twelve maximum. Twelve. Oh, that's, that's a nice number, though. Okay. So yeah. you know, and we do. You know, we 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 really offer small um, groups. Really, that that's that's our specialism because you know um, you get more one to one, but well, also. I, I think I think it's also the way that we're gonna, uh, you know, the people are gonna have to understand. This is a way if we want to carry on the tourists, not just yeah. in Italy, everywhere in the world. Yeah. This is a way where it's gonna have to be. Uh, it's gonna we're gonna be able to to, to do it. And uh, what I think we need to do in Italy, above all, is uh, since uh, the majority of tourists is located in certain areas, is to spread the tourism in the area yeah. where, like Le Marte, you don't have so much. We don't and have much. You yeah. know, uh, as as your friend says, more than personal, you know, and more, uh, you know, longer stay, less people, but quality tourism, you exactly. know. Exactly. Slow travel, really. That's what we're, we we need to now think about, I think, until this, <laughs> this thing's uh, dealt with uh, in a manner that we can be free again of those sort of restrictions. But, yeah, I think um, this is a perfect place to be, uh, just as – people should really think about when they go to venice when they get back to venice um you know you canareggio those sort of the you know the, the beautiful places that are not the s tourist spots yeah. they've, they've got wonderful restaurants they've got wonderful Castello, bars castello as well is another one of the beautiful judeca i mean it's, yeah. venice is not san marco it's people's got to stop thinking that venice is yeah. san marco and rialto yeah it is san marco yeah. and rialto as well you know but i, I repeat uh, i really like the idea that you are one of those people that organize uh, long stays uh, small groups uh, yeah. and that you're offering an experience uh, and and people get to live uh, like uh, uh you know with the locals in a way and i think as well when you're sitting down and paint as you say people it's not just the tourists that approach you and venetians tend to be very detached but i think with painters yeah, i can understand yeah because a lot yeah. of the are painters anyway because it is part of our culture i mean i know yeah. a lot of friends that uh, you know as a hobby paint and uh, you know we go an academy uh, you know we yeah art is part of our background you know so show me the sign before the times run out please <laughs> because okay. we need about two minutes <laughs> okay well so, so anyway, Monica, thank you um, for for the invitation to. to okay, we do it in a second. Show me the sign first, because then otherwise I got to catch yeah. <laughs> the video. Yeah. And I will do the here's, the, here's the sign. Hang on. I knew you just would be organised. I'm just going to switch it over. Is that coming yeah. out backwards? Because you backwards? switch it back to you and hold in your hands. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Here we go. I don't that, know how that, that is it, not works, you see? Oh, okay, hang so yeah. hang on, I'll just put it on the wall. That's fine. You want to switch the light on? Okay, good. So um, um, go backwards a bit. Okay, so it's very treat at lemarkretreat.com on hold on. Uh on tweet oh sorry, on Instagram is with your okay, right. Then you can see guys because I got all the comments so I can't see anything. What I'll do, no, I'll read it because I can't see it. Sorry. Oh, I, I know. Monica, what I'll do is I'll just put it on as a comment at the end. I'll, I'll take yes, a photo and link it. And yeah, then, and then uh, put it well, right um, yeah, that's fine. The, light, the light's not particularly good, actually, in the uh, canteen. It's very but ambient. But there you. we go. Uh, the only thing is that I couldn't find you on Facebook because I wanted to tag you today, but uh, maybe I was looking for the wrong retreat because I, I was trying to find the retreat. But on Facebook, yeah. I couldn't find your page. 
the retreat at Painting Holidays Italy. Uh, it's the ah, retreat at Painting right. Holidays Okay, when I try to Italy. tag you, I, I'll add it to my phone. Can, can I send you that link later? Yeah, and then you can add it. That would be so great. That, yeah, we do it that way because that's it. Thank you, Monica. It's been, Guys, it's, been, it's been a lovely chat, a great I conversation. See, I hope to see you both in, uh, in Venice uh, as soon as they open the gates. <laughs> I'll, def I'll, def I'll definitely come and see you. That would be wonderful, okay? <laughs> Like, we love the animals, though, okay? Just the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, you everybody. It's my pleasure. And keep and safe. Stay safe, okay? Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.